everyone, it's story time with Jocelyn. And today we're going to be reading a Raggedy Ann story. Now this is my old Raggedy Ann. I've had her for a really long time and I love her. My middle name is Ann, so I like to think that I'm a little bit of a Raggedy Ann myself. Jocelyn is also holding her Raggedy Ann and we're also joined because next week we're going to read a Raggedy Andy story. So we thought we'd let Andy join us as well. Now, Andy was a gift from Grandma Lou. So we love him as well. So today, let's get started on our Raggedy Ann story from Jocelyn's collection of Raggedy Ann stories. And they're by Johnny Grell. So let us begin. Marcella liked to play up in the attic at Grandma's quaint old house way out in the country, for there were so many old forgotten things to find up there. One day when Marcella was up in the attic and had played with the old spinning wheel until she had grown tired of it, she curled up on an old horsehair sofa to rest. I wonder what it is that barrel way back in the corner, she thought as she jumped up from the sofa and climbed over two dusky trunks to the barrel standing back under the heaves. It was quite dark back there, so when Marcella had pulled a large bundle of things from the barrow, she took them over to the Dharma window where she could see much better. There was a funny little bonnet with long white ribbons. Marcella put it on. In an old leather bag, she found a number of tin types of looking good looking men and women in old fashioned clothes. And there was one picture of a very pretty little girl with long curls tied tightly back from her forehead and wearing a long dress with beautiful penny looms which reached to her shoe tops. And then out of the heap, she pulled an old rag doll with only one shoe button eye and a painted nose and a smiling mouth. Her dress was of soft material, blue. <laughs> blue. With pretty little flowers and dots all over it. Forgetting everything else in the happiness of her find, Marcella caught up the rag doll and ran downstairs to show it to Grandma. Well, well, where did you find it? Grandma cried. It's old Raggedy Ann. She went on as she hugged the doll to her breast. I had forgotten her. She had been in the attic for 50 years, I guess. Well, well, dear old Raggedy Ann. I will sew another button on her right away. And Grandma went to the machine drawer and got her needle and thread. Marcella watched the sewing while Grandma told her she had played with Raggedy Ann when she was a little girl. Now, Grandma laughed. <laughs> Raggedy Ann, you have two fine shoe button eyes, and with them, you can see the changes that have taken place in the world while you have been shut up for so long in the attic. For Raggedy Ann, you have a new playmate and mistress now, and I hope you both will have as much happiness together as you and I used to have. Then Grandma gave Raggedy Ann to Marcella, saying very seriously, Marcella, let me introduce my very dear friend, Raggedy Ann. Raggedy, this is my granddaughter, Marcella. And Grandma gave the doll a twitch with her fingers in such a way that the rag doll nodded her head to Marcella. Oh, Grandma, thank you ever, ever, ever so much. Marcella cried as she gave Grandma a hug and a kiss. Raggedy and I will have just loads of fun. And this is how Raggedy Ann joined the doll family at Marcella's house, where she began the adventures of Raggedy Ann 
told in the following stories. And today we're going to read the very first Raggedy Ann story. And it is called Raggedy Ann Learns a Lesson. One day, the dolls were left all to themselves. Their little mistress had placed them all around the room and told them to be nice children while she was away. And there they sat and never ever so much as wiggled a finger until their mistress had left the room. Then the shoulder dolly, shoulder dolly turned his head and solemnly winked at Raggedy Ann. And when the front gate clicked and the dollies knew they were alone, all had scrambled to their feet. Now, let's have a good time, cried the tin soldier. Let's all go in search of something to eat. Yes, let's all go in search of something to eat, cried all the other dollies. When Mistress had, out, had me out playing with me this morning, said Raggedy Ann, she carried me by a door near the back of the house, Jocelyn, and I smelled something which smelled as if it would taste delicious. Hmm? <laughs> then you led the way, Raggedy Ann, cried the French dolly. I think it would be a good plan to elect Raggedy Ann as our leader on this expedition, said the Indian doll. And this, all the other dolls clapped their hands together and shouted, Hurrah! Raggedy Ann will be our leader. So Raggedy Ann, very proud indeed to have the confidence and love of all the other dollies, said that she would be very glad to be their leader. Follow me, she cried as her wobbly legs carried her across the floor at a lively pace. The other dollies followed, racing about the house until they came to a pantry door, Jocelyn. This is the place, cried Raggedy Ann, and sure enough, all the dollies smelled something which they knew must be very good to eat. Mmm. But none of the dollies was tall enough to open the door, and although they pushed and pulled with all their might, the door remained tightly closed. The dollies were talking and pulling and pushing, and every once in a while, one would fall over and the others would step on her in their efforts to open the door. And finally, Raggedy Ann drew away and sat down on the floor. When the other dollies discovered Raggedy Ann sitting there, running her rag hands through her yarn hair, they knew that she was thinking. Shh! they said to each other and quietly went over near Raggedy Ann and sat down in front of her. There must, there must be a way, said Raggedy Ann. Raggedy says there must be a way to get inside, cried all the other dolls. I can't seem to think clearly today, said Raggedy Ann. It feels as if my head were ripped. At this, the French doll ran to Raggedy Ann and took off her bonnet. Bonnet, and yes, there is a rip in her head, Raggedy she said, and she pulled a pin from her skirt and pinned up Raggedy's head. It's not a very neat job, for I've got some puckers in it, she said. Oh, that is ever so much better, cried Raggedy Ann. Now I can think very clearly. Now Raggedy can think clearly, cried all the other dolls. My thoughts must have leaked out the rip before, said Raggedy Ann. They must have leaked out before, dear Raggedy, cried all the other dolls. Now that I can think so clearly, said Raggedy Ann, I think the door must be locked. And to get in, we must unlock it. That will be easy, said the Dutch doll who says, Mama, when he is tipped backward and forward. For the brave tin soldier can shoot the key out of the lock. I can easily do that, cried the tin soldier as he raised his gun. Oh, Raggedy Ann, cried the French dolly. Please do not let him shoot. No, <clears throat> said Raggedy Ann. We must think of a quieter way. After thinking quite hard for a moment, Raggedy Ann jumped up and said, I and she caught up the jumping jack 
and she held up to the door and then Jack slid up his stick and unlocked the door. Then the dollies all pushed and the door swung open. My, such a scramble. The dolls piled on one and another in their desire to be the first at the goodies. They swarmed upon the pantry shelves and in their eagerness spilled a pitcher of cream which ran all over the French dolly's dress. The Indian doll found some cornbread and dipping in the molasses, he sat down for a good, good feast. A jar of raspberry jam, mmm, yum, Jocelyn, was overturned <clears throat> and the dollies ate at this until their faces were all purple. The tin soldier fell from the shelf three times and bent one of his tin legs, but he scrambled right back up again. Never had the dolls had so much fun and excitement, and they all had eaten their fill when they heard the click of the front gate. They did not take time to climb from the shelves but all rolled and jumped off the floor and scrambled back to their room as fast as they could, Jocelyn. They ran, leaving a trail of breadcrumbs <clears throat> and jam along the way back to the nursery. Just as their mistress came into the room, the dolls dropped in whatever positions they had happened to be in. Huh, this is funny, cried mistress. They were all left sitting in their places around the room. I wonder if Fido had been shaking them up. Then she saw Raggedy Ann's face and picked her up. Why, Raggedy Ann, you are all sticky. I do believe you are covered with jam. And mistress tasted Raggedy Ann's hand. Yes, it is jam. Shame on you, Raggedy Ann. You've been in the pantry and all the others too, right, Jocelyn? And with this, the doll's mistress dropped Raggedy Ann on the floor and left the room. When she came back, she had on an apron and her sleeves were rolled up. She picked up all the sticky dolls, putting them in a basket. She carried them out under the apple tree in the garden. There she had placed her little tub and wringler and she took the dolls one at a time and scrambled them up and scrubbed them with a scrubbing brush and sussed them up and down with this way and that and the soap suds until they were clean, Jocelyn. And then she hung them up all on the clothesline in the sunshine to dry. There the dolls hung all day, swinging and twisting about as the breeze swayed the clothesline. I do believe she scrubbed my face so hard, she wore off my smile, said Raggedy Ann after an hour of silence. <laughs> Look at how dirty Raggedy Ann got. <clears throat> no, it is still there said the tin soldier as the wind twisted around so he could see raggedy. But I do believe my arms will never work without squeaking. They feel so rusted, he added. Just then the wind twisted the little Dutch doll and loosened his clothespin <clears throat> so that he fell to the grass below with a saw dusty bump. As he rolled over, he said, Mama, in a squeaky voice. Late in the afternoon, the back door opened and the little mistress came out with a table and chairs. After setting the table, she took all the dolls from the line and placed them about the table. They had lemonade with grape jelly in it, which made it a beautiful lavender color and little baby teeny weeny cookies with powdered sugar on them. Mmm. After this lovely dinner, the dollies were taken in the house, Jocelyn, where they had their hair brushed and nice clean nighties put on. Then they were placed in their beds and mistress kissed each one good night and tiptoed from the room, closing the door very gently behind her. All the dolls laid as still as mice for a few minutes. And then Raggedy Ann raised upon her cotton stuffed elbows and said, I have been thinking. Hmm. Yes, said Raggedy Ann, I have been thinking. Our mistress gave us the nice dinner out under the trees to teach us a lesson. She wanted to teach us that we could have had all the goodies we wished 
if we would have behaved ourselves. And our lesson was that we must never take without asking what we could always have for the asking. That's a good lesson. So let us all remember and try never again to do anything which might cause those who love us any unhappiness of any kind. Right, Jocelyn? Let us all remember, chimed all the other dollies. And Raggedy Ann, with a merry twinkle in her shoe button eyes, laid back in her little bed, her cotton head filled with thoughts of love and happiness. <laughs> and that is the story of when Raggedy Ann learned a lesson. I hope y'all enjoyed that story of Raggedy Ann learning a lesson. And I hope that next week you'll join us for Andy when he comes into the picture. Right, Raggedy Ann? And from Raggedy Ann and Andy and from Jocelyn and me, we'd like to say bye. And thank you for joining us on Storytime this week.